10 Commandments in the Quran Part 1 Part 1 of 3 A Quick Introduction Description, a review of what are the Ten Commandments and their place in Jewish, Christian, and Islamic faiths. Reading the title, some people might think of the Ten Commandments. It must be clarified that Islamic teachings do not look favorably at portraying prophets of God in images or the screen, one of the most financially. Movies and rated as one of the best ten. Or the title might stir the memories of the national debate of putting the Ten Commandments on public property and use in public schools that ended in the Supreme Court in 2005. Leaving aside the movies and the media, basic facts on Ten Commandments are little known. That is why in the following three articles we will explore what the Ten Commandments are. Who follows them? What is their relevance to modern American life? What solutions, if any, do they provide for today's challenges? Let us start with the basics. The Ten Commandments have their origin in the Jewish religion, but they are also found in the Christian Bibles. It is said to be inscribed on two tablets that were given by God to Moses. In the Bible, they are recorded in Exodus 20 verses 2-17 and Deuteronomy 5 verses 6-21. The Exodus list is more commonly accepted by Christians. Encyclopedia Britannica describes them to be a list of religious precepts that were divinely revealed to Moses on M.T. Sinai and were engraved on two tablets of stone. Ten Commandments Encyclopedia Britannica Encyclopedia Britannica Online Encyclopedia Britannica Inc., 2012 Web January 10, 2012 Judaism teaches that the first tablet, containing the first five declarations, identifies duties regarding our relationship with God, while the second tablet, containing the last five declarations, identifies duties regarding our relationship with other. Catholics believe, the Ten Commandments are precepts bearing on the fundamental obligations of religion and morality and embodying the revealed expression of the Creator's will in relation to man's whole duty to God and to his fellow. The Hebrew, Protestant, and Catholic versions differ. This is not a well-known fact, the Ten Commandments as public ritual. Contributors, Derek H. Davis Author Journal Title, Journal of Church and State Volume, 44 Issue, 2, Publication Year, 2002 Page Number, 221 What place does the biblical version hold in modern society? Jews are careful not to publicly overemphasize them so as not to create the impression that Judaism has only these Ten Commandments and no others. Christian theologians, on the other hand, consider them to be the moral law of God to guide society, a standard of sorts to measure the health of the society. As a result, what place, if any, should these commandments hold in modern Western, secular societies is a hotly debated subject. Should they be part of public schooling? Can they be displayed in public? The issues have been debated even by the Supreme Court of the U.S. Despite the attention, most commandments are simply ignored by the society. Secularists even consider the biblical version to be intolerant. Great emphasis is placed on these commandments in the Islamic faith. Three verses in the Quran, the sacred book of Islam, speak of them. Prophet Muhammad's companions emphasize their centrality. The Quran speaks of them in Surah Anam, 6 151 153, and Surah Isra, 17 23 39. Surah Isra, 17 23 39 is like a commentary on the commandments listed in Surah Anam. Say, O Messenger, to the people, come. I will read to you what Allah has made unlawful. He has made it unlawful that you associate any creation as partner to him, that you disobey your parents, for it is your duty to be good to them. That you kill your children due to poverty, as the people during the period of ignorance used to do, provide for you and for them. He has also made it unlawful that you go near immoral acts, whether they are done openly or in secret, and that you kill the soul that Allah has prohibited you from killing. Unless it is done rightfully, such as in the case of adultery and apostasy. He has instructed you with what was mentioned so that you understand Allah's instructions and prohibitions. He has prohibited you from becoming involved with the wealth of orphans, those who lose their father before maturity until they became mature and are considered to be sensible. Unless you do so in a manner that brings benefit and an increase in that wealth. He has also prohibited you from giving short measure or weight, rather, it is necessary that you are fair and just when taking or giving anything in a purchase and sale transaction. He does not burden a soul more than it can bear, and you will not be taken to ask for any increase or decrease in measure that is unintentional. He has, likewise, prohibited you from saying that which is false when relating an incident or giving testimony, displaying unfair preference to a relative or friend. 
he has, too, prohibited you from breaking Allah's pledge. If you make a pledge with Allah or in Allah's name, then such pacts must be fulfilled. Allah has instructed you at the above in the hope that you would ponder over the outcomes of your actions. He has prohibited you from following the paths of misguidance. You are required to follow Allah's straight path, in which there is no crookedness. The paths of misguidance will lead you far away from the path of truth. Allah instructs you to follow the straight path in the hope that you will become mindful of Him by fulfilling His instructions and staying away from His prohibitions. After all this, I relate to you that I gave the Torah to Moses as a completion of my favor and a reward for his good actions, to make everything regired in religion clear. And as a mercy in the hope that they would have faith in the meeting with their Lord on the day of judgment and prepare for it with good actions. Alanam 151-154 Your Lord Ozervan has instructed and made obligatory that you worship none but him, and he has instructed that you be good to your parents, especially when they become old. If either of them or both of them reach old age with you, do not become annoyed with them by uttering words that indicate the same, do not scold them and do not be harsh when speaking to them. But say to them kind words that are soft and courteous. Humble yourself before them in humility and out of compassion, and say, O oh my Lord, be merciful to them as they have brought me up in my childhood. Your Lord, O people, knows best what is within you of the sincere devotion to Him in worship, acts of goodness and being dutiful to parents. If the intention in your acts of worship, treatment of your parents and other acts is righteous, then he, may he be glorified, is forgiving towards those who frequently turn to him in repentance. If anyone repents from his prior failure to be dutiful to his Lord or to his parents, Allah will forgive him. O believer, give the relative his rights by keeping family ties, give to the poor and needy, and give the traveler who is stranded. Do not spend your wealth in sin or in a manner that is wasteful. O believer, give the relative his rights by keeping family ties, give to the poor and needy, and give the traveler who is stranded. Do not spend your wealth in sin or in a manner that is wastedful. Those who spend their wealth in sin and those who are wasteful in their spending are the brothers of the devils. They follow their instructions of being wasteful and extravagant Satan is ever ungrateful towards his Lord, and he only does things that are sinful and only instructs that which displeases his Lord. But if you refrain from giving these people, due to not having anything to give them, while waiting for Allah to bless you with provision, then say to them gentle and polite words such as praying for them to have abundant provision or promising to give them if Allah grants you wealth. Do not withhold your hand from spending, and do not be wasteful when spending, if you do, you will be blameful amongst the people for your miserliness. Or you will become mewable to spend due to your extravagant expenditure. Your Lord expands the provision for whoever He wills, and restricts it for whoever He wills based on far-reaching wisdom. He is fully aware and observant of His servants. Nothing of theirs is hidden from Him, and He disposes of His matter with respect to them however He willeth. Do not kill your children for fear of poverty in the future if you spend on them. I take charge of providing for them, and for you too. Killing them is a major sin, as they have done nothing wrong and there is no reason requiring them to be killed. Be careful of fornication and avoid things that prompt it. It is extremely detestable and bad path to traverse as it leads to the mixing of lineages and punishment from Allah. Do not kill the soul whose life Allah has protected through faith or a pledge of security, except if the killing is merited on the basis of treason or legal retribution. If someone is killed unjustly, without a valid reason permitting his being killed, I have given his successor who takes charge of his affairs certain authority over the killer. He may demand that the killer be killed in retribution, or he may forgive him without asking for anything in return, or he may forgive him and take the blood money. But he shall not mutilate the killer, or by killing him with something that he did not use to kill, or by killing someone other than the killer, even if he was a helper and supporter. Do not transact in the property of a child whose father has passed away, except in his best interests such as investing or preserving it until he reaches the age of mental and prudential maturity. Fulfill any pledge between yourselves and Allah, or between yourselves and his servants, without breaking or falling short in them. Allah will guest I on the one who made a pledge on the day of judgment. Did he fulfill it, in which case he will reward him, or did he not fulfill it, in which case he will punish him? Give full measure when you measure for others and do not cheat them. Weigh with an accurate scale that does not diminish or undervalue anything. That giving a full weight and measure is better for you in this world and the hereafter than giving short measure or weight. Do not follow Osan of Adam that which you have no knowledge of, by following suspicions and conjecture. A person will be questioned about the good or bad that he used his hearing, sight and heart for and he will rewarded for the good and punished for the bad. Do not walk on earth with pride and arrogance. If you walk haughtily on earth you will not be able to split the earth, nor will your stature reach the mountains in height and elevation. Why then are you so proud? 
the evil of all that has been mentioned above is prohibited by your Lord Oman. Allah is not pleased with those who perpetrate this and He in fact attests them. Those instructions, prohibitions and laws that we have explained to you are part of what your Lord has revealed to you. Do not take Oman another deity together with Allah, for you will be thrown into hell on the day of judgment, blamed by your own soul and by people and banished from every good. Al-Isra, 23-39 some scholars call them the verses of the Ten Commandments simply because they speak of ten significant commandments to be observed by a Muslim. The Quran does not directly state that these are the same commandments that were given to Moses. Ibn Masudi, a famous companion of Prophet Muhammad said, Tirmidhi. Whoever wishes to ascertain the will of Prophet Muhammad on which the Prophet has put his seal, let him read the statement of God, and then he recited the three verses. The Prophet of Islam himself said, who among you will give me his pledge to do three things? He then recited the verse 6. 151 and continued, Whoever fulfills this pledge, then his reward will be with God, but whoever fell into shortcomings and God punishes him for it in this life, then that will be his recompense. Whoever God delays, his reckoning, until the hereafter, then his matter is with God. If he wills, he will punish him, and if he wills, he will forgive him, Hakim said, its chain is sahi and they did not record it. Islamic view, these commandments contain what God wills for the life of all people. It has five orders and a similar number of prohibitions that define the relationship of man and his creator, man's obligations to his family, and commandments that order his social life. What follows are the Ten Commandments of Quran and their relevance to modern life.